A train leaves Jacobabad Junction early morning. Miles away, people begin to gather along its tracks. Young men and old, aging widows, small children, on foot, on cycles, dragging wheelbarrows, riding donkey carts, headed for the station to meet the train. From a distance, it could well be a festival of blasted cans. This is Jafarabad district in Baluchistan, Pakistan's biggest province, but a region that since the late 50s has been a nerve center of dissent. Barely hours from where we are, their most famous leader, Nawab Bukhti, was shot dead in 2006. Bukhti had led the fight for a greater autonomy for Baluchistan, a region that supplies Pakistan a lion's share of natural gas and natural resources. If you travel around here, you would never know the region is so rich. A look at the tribal settlements of this rugged and parched terrain and you know they are among the most neglected, the most visible symbol, the absence of water. In 1981, as a stopgap measure, the government started this train to Jafarabad. Since then, a lifeline for hundreds of settlements along its tracks. It comes every week, well, almost every week. in India, as we've seen in the pictures, village bells are always surrounded by young women. But in this countryside, the queue for water brings out a completely different sociological landscape. The village of Nutal has got this week's quota and the train moves on. We hitch a ride for what will be its last halt for the day. But even before we can halt, villagers have already climbed the tanker. After all, their wait on this scorching day has been the longest. We enter Bhaktiyarbad town. The water supply is as the week turns, lack of water becomes so cute that people start literally scraping the bottom of the barrel. As the water train, now empty, returns to where it came from, the vigil by the tracks begin again. A report by Naseed Ahmed Sheikh from Baluchistan in Pakistan. Coming up after the break, the cult of martyrdom grows around Benazir Bhutto in her hometown in Sindh.